in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and ScoreNorth.com. Ah. Uh, we have, I wouldn't say breaking news yet. Developing news? It would say developing in all caps on the bottom of like whatever news outlet you're watching. Report from Adam Schefter, noted NFL insider. He says there's a real possibility that the Vikings and Adam Thielen will part ways in the coming days, allowing the two-time Pro Bowl wide receiver to become a free agent per sources. The two sides will talk in coming days, but his time in Minnesota could be coming to an end. And then Ben Gessling from the Star Tribune plugged into the Thielen camp as well as anyone. He says the Vikings and wide receiver Adam Thielen could be parting ways in the next several days. A source said they've been working on a restructured deal and will continue to talk, but a release is a real possibility. Mm-hmm. So someone close to Thielen has sent out the bat signal to a national and a local NFL and Vikings reporter. And uh, this generally, I, there's, usually you don't put the toothpaste back in the tube after this. This is like step one of, all right, let's brace everyone for this. And um, whenever the other shoe drops is anyone's guess. But by the way, the show here is presented by TCL. TCL is now an official partner also of the National Football League. And TCL has award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. TCL makes more than just TVs. They offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. This bonus episode of Purple Daily, Judd. If I'm not mistaken, too, credit where credit is due. To go back a few weeks, perhaps the per- the first person to mention any of this who's uh, very plugged in to certain people who know AT19 well Darren Doogie Wilson, our own yes. scoop maestro. Give him his bouquet. He is, I, I think he might have been the first because, you know, here's the thing about us here at Score North. And I, I should say, it's not all of us. Some of us get a little bit of an itch to cut guys. Some of us get a little itch to part ways with guys who have been around for perhaps a little bit too long. And so they start to ask questions. And that sends our guy Doogie scurrying for answers. And so he brought this up. Um, in fact, I, I, uh, full disclosure, a couple days ago, I got a tweet that basically said from Doogie, what Schefter said, which is, this is leaning towards a divorce. I think the most important question, I guess, is this, not the divorce itself that can sort itself out, but are we looking at a, at a eat the entire cap hit right now and release him? Or are we looking at a post June 1st cut and fill you can go into that, but you're allowed two of those per player on your roster, and that would save the Vikings quite a bit against the cap for 2023, but 2024, uh, some uh, some uh, cap ramifications would take yeah. place. So I, I think that if you're a Vikings fan, I think that's the real question to ask now. Yeah, you really have, you have if he's gone, you have, well, you have technically have three options. You're, you, two of them are cutting him, and one is a trade. But it sound, the language of how Schefter and Gessling are phrasing this, it sounds like there's just going to be a parting of ways. My guess is the Vikings have probably explored. Obviously, if they could get a draft pick for him, they would they would do that. So they've probably already exhausted. This is probably what's been happening behind the scenes for the last like three weeks, as Doogie has alluded to. So you could do two things. Then if you can't trade him, you can cut Thielen. Which means you would uh, you would eat thirteen and a half of his twenty million dollar cap hit. Would so the third you'd be having Adam Thielen's contract on your books for thirteen and a half million dollars, and he would not be playing for you. You'd save six and a half, but he'd be gone off your books. You wouldn't have to worry about like pushing money into the future. If you wanted to free up more money for next week, because the Vikings have the like the third or fifth worst cap situation in the league, even after I think it's like the fifth worst even after cutting Eric Kendricks. If you wanted more money now, more breathing room for free agents now, next week, you could do a post June first designation. You can do this to, uh, for up to two players on your team, which means you say goodbye, even if it's March fifteenth next week. 
that player can go sign somewhere else, you would get the cap savings. But because it's a post June 1st designation, you would save more money. You would save uh, 13 and a half this year. And seven million would be on your books for next year. So you'd be kicking the can down the road for the end. So that's kind of the mechanics of of what's happening here. But let me ask you guys this. Is there any chance? Because Thielen has been adamant. His wife has been adamant on social media. I don't care that I'm 33 years old for this upcoming season. I've been a little banged up, but I have way more left in the tank than everyone thinks. You guys are writing me off too early. And that's ultimately what's leading to this divorce, right? He thinks he has a lot more to give. He still wants to make more money than the Vikings are obviously asking him to make. Is there any chance Thielen's right here that the Vikings are cutting bait on a franchise legend a little too early and not having enough faith in a bounce back season? No, zero chance. Here's why. He is a, if he was willing to accept a role as a three, as the third receiver at a possession guy, I would say, Bring him back at a reduced salary. The reality, though, is think about what Justin Jefferson needs. And he doesn't need a guy who is unfortunately, I think, going to spend the rest of his career running in quicksand. He needs a guy that can stretch the field. Everything you do offensively from here on out, in my opinion, is going to be about um, making sure that Justin Jefferson is as good as he can possibly be. Like we saw that last year. And you thought to yourself, how many times, if you had a guy that could stretch the field, how much more dangerous does he become? How much more uncoverable? Because then you've got to go with that that guy. And I have no doubt Thielen is a very tough dude, okay? We saw him make some catches, get tackled, writhe in pain, and then come back in almost immediately. So I'm not doubting that. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying is, if we are... If, if Justin Jefferson is the filet mignon of the Vikings offense, okay, all of the, all of the other foods around him need to be complimenting him. Does Adam Thielen wanting his old rollback? Cause I mean, that's the key here, Phil. Exactly right. Does Adam Thielen give Justin Jefferson the best chance t- to succeed? And I would say absolutely not. Doesn't mean he can't catch the ball. Doesn't mean he can't contribute elsewhere. But if he's going to say, hey, I need to be, it needs to be me and JJ, I'm going to say, dude, you are never going to stretch the field again like you could at one time. And look, the PFF grades that we've been through and talked about and their dissection proves that. Yeah. And he's not getting younger. Yeah. So the uh, feeling is like the Brussels sprouts have been a little bit overcooked here on, on the side of the filet mignon. Oh, yeah. Great, great ad. Great side dish. Love me some Brussels sprouts. But I you, actually you, love you... overcooked Brussels sprouts. I'm not going to yeah, But they're, they're a little too crunchy. They're a little too charred. You left like them in a little bit too longer. Great addition. But like you're, they're, they're, they're a little, little too charred. I mean, he was targeted last year 107 times. So, like, dude. You were getting the you were the ball is being thrown your way a ton last year. It's not like the targets went down because you're slow. Like they were still figuring out ways to target you. You hauled in 70 catches, which is still pretty respectable at 32. But it's obvious you're not the same guy you were three or four years ago when you were an all pro and you were a, a, a pro bowler. So I think he just has to accept the fact that, look, you can probably still have what two to three more solid seasons in the NFL. But Adam, you lose a step when you get older. It just it, it happens. It's natural. And you're no longer the guy you used to be, and you have to kind of accept that. Yeah, I think I think there's a little truth to what he's saying. That hey, give me an off season to get right. And my legs were mangled at different times, and I played through it. But it, but him getting healthier in the off season doesn't take in in you know, a year off of his age. You know how how many receivers Julio Jones got past thirty? He was no longer invincible, right? This happens all the time. Randy Moss. Got into his early 30s, wasn't outrunning cornerbacks like he used to. So I do think he still adds value. I think sometimes it's hard when you get to this point in a relationship and he's been the guy here for six, seven, eight years. And by the way, KJ Osborne, he's been doing a bunch of media because he helped pull a man out of a burning car recently. And uh, he was on, I can't remember which podcast it was, if it was Schefter's or someone else's, but he called Adam Thielen the best teammate he's had in his football life, high school, college, NFL, everything in terms of just being a leader and a, and a, just a great guy behind the scenes to teach young receivers. So 
you do lose these things. You don't, there is a price to be paid as much as Eric Kendricks and Adam Thielen. Some of these guys are aging out. Patrick Peterson, their value on the field is diminishing, but it is a, I, I think sometimes Judd, you, you're so quick to just like be done with players and whatnot, but they will have, they said goodbye to Kendricks. They're about to say goodbye to Adam Thielen. Patrick Peterson might not be back. Guys need to step into those leadership roles, which is part of the reason why you keep Harrison Smith and Absolutely. Daniel yeah. Hunter and whatnot. But yep. it will be felt. I do think they can find a better on-field replacement, whether it's Chark or a draft pick or whatever. I agree on that front. But mm-hmm. um, but they will have work to do to fill sort of the behind-the-scenes stuff that is going to be left behind these last couple of weeks. So to his credit, Thielen played in all 17 games last year. And as he has said was did a lot of it banged up okay but in the three seasons prior to 2022 he played in 10 games 15 games and 13 games and so if this was a one season blip i might say okay yeah you were banged up but but it's not this is a lifetime achievement award of playing a sport that brutally takes a toll on your body yeah and so the uh, but the and my thing is and phil you you know, I'm Mr. Chemistry. Like, I am locker room guy. I love you them. So it's guy. incredibly yeah. important. I think that those roles, I think that the veterans that step up, what Patrick Peterson contributed was incredibly uh, valuable defensively to a team that wasn't good defensively, but I think he was a very positive influence. That being said, when a player and his spouse publicly take their beef with the team to Twitter or Instagram, or the TikTok, Mm -hmm. I think you run into a thing where, okay, now it's diminishing returns. Because if you're, pardon my French, bitching about your role, not happy publicly, and now you go back in the locker room, you're not that same guy. You're a guy who's saying, I want mine. And not to get super personal, but when your family or your wife is doing it, it's that, that did rub me the wrong way. Well, that she went out, and 100%. It's like, okay, I I understand the conversation you, you guys have in private or you're probably ticked off or you feel like, you know, you don't want to go out this way. But did did they need, did she need to spill that into the public eye for them to get what they want ultimately? Like this was going to work itself out behind the scenes whether she decided to make those comments. So that, that part of it did rub me the wrong way. As you said a couple of weeks ago on a different topic, I think it was uh, during a statements on Monday, you, you said in Bill Guerin, I trust, you know, Bill Guerin looked at Cam Talbot, same exact thing. Wife got upset and then, and but, but you know, the your wife, your spouse ordinarily does not get upset for you if you're not upset, right? So, you know, Cam Talbot's wife got mad and aired basically the the dirty laundry of the situation out. And then it became clear he was mad and Bill Guerin said, I don't need this. I'm not going to deal with it. And so Thielen, I think, you know, in the community, been great. In that locker room, great. To the media for a long time, great. But I think there comes a point in time where if, you, if you're if you like, you know what? It's time for me to be selfish. Whether you're right or wrong, it becomes very hard to become that or to stay that same guy. And the last thing is, Kwesi and Kevin O'Connell, for as loyal as they were, and they, you know, I still think that the Wilf said keep guys and they got the job. So they said, of course we will. But for as loyal as they were, they've got a vision here. And it's not a bunch of aging geriatric football players. Yeah. You know, so the reality is this. And this is if you're a Vikings fan, I think this is what's super exciting is what's the next chapter. And in all sports, but football, especially blind loyalty of, well, he's been here a long time is how you lose games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he is going to, if this is it for Adam Thielen, he's going to wind up fourth on the Vikings. Well, I wouldn't say wind up because Jefferson's going to catch him probably next year. But right now he's fourth on the all-time receiving yards list behind Chris Carter, Randy Moss, and Anthony Carter. He's a 1,000 yards behind Anthony Carter. Last year he passed Jake Reed, Sammy White, Steve Jordan, those three guys. Jefferson's going to be up in there somewhere. Uh, But he's also on the all-time touchdown receptions list. It's Chris Carter, Randy Moss, Adam Thielen is third. Jefferson's going to catch him, but receptions list. He's third behind Carter and Moss. So you could, he is, he's likely on the Mount Rushmore of 
all-time Vikings receivers right now. Three potential options for where he could wind up, just off the top of my head. He's got this kind of weird, chummy, chummy relationship with Aaron Rodgers. You know, they like play golf together at pro-ams and stuff, and they're constantly, uh, you know, dapping each other up on the field after games, especially if Rodgers goes to the Jets. I could see Thielen sliding in. See, he's going to be much more likely to just accept a role as like a third guy on a team if Aaron Rodgers goes to the Jets. It's hard. I think it's hard for your ego sometimes to do it in the place where you've been the man, right? Like, hey, if, if all things were equal and you were just coming in from the outside, Adam, why don't you come in here and be kind of the third or fourth guy behind Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkins, and KJ Osborne? Okay. Going to New York, you know, the, the Jets have a couple really nice weapons. Garrett Wilson is one of the best young receivers in the NFL. Elijah Moore was the second round pick a couple years ago. Tyler Conklin is there. He's familiar with Tyler Conklin. So he could kind of pretty easily slide in as a as a number three red zone guy for Aaron Rodgers. I would say uh the Baltimore Ravens, if Lamar Jackson go if if Lamar Jackson goes elsewhere and their quarterback situation's up in the air, I don't know if I would sign there if I was thinking, but if like if Lamar Jackson somehow went back to Baltimore and they're lacking receivers, there's some tension in the receiver room, right? Thielen could come in and maybe help bridge that. And what about Kansas City? If you're looking to win a Super Bowl and just slot in as a guy, right? Like, how how can I be used in the twilight of my career to the maximum? Let me just be a sleuth in the red zone 10 different times for Patrick Mahomes. So those are three teams that come to mind right away. So I think a lot of that depends on, and I don't know this, what he wants. If you go to the Chiefs, that's a clear, oh my God, I'm not, I might not be used a ton, but when I am, it's going to be for a Super Bowl team, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but and I, I think we don't know this. The question is, does he still see himself as I got to be at least a, a top two guy? Um, keep in mind, quarterback wise, this would be a little bit dysfunctional, perhaps. But keep in mind, he lives in Orlando and loves to golf. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in his backyard, but they're going to be bad. So I know, but the again, Jags if he or, wants Jags or Dolphins would be more logical, probably areas for him. And Although the Jags, Jags, the Jags are stacked, man. They got and, Ridley coming back. Yeah, this this all depends on what he perceives as as what he wants from his role. And I, you know what? Even with Rogers gone, the vindictiveness of joining the Packers sure would be fun to watch, <laughs> wouldn't it? Would he do it if if it was Jordan Love? No, I he shouldn't. But again, the vindictiveness, man. The vindictiveness. I'd like to know. I mean, he clearly is telling the Vikings, hey, I should be the number two guy when it's, you know, he shouldn't be. But I wouldn't put it past him to be vindictive enough to attempt to stay in the division. That could end very poorly. You know, if, if, if again, if, if Rodgers is there, Rodgers can probably, hell, Randall Cobb was still somewhat effective two yeah. years beyond the length of his NFL career should have been because Aaron Rodgers and him have great chemistry. He demanded that Randall Cobb come back. Hmm. Here's my question. Have the Vikings did crazy Brzezinski has been there for a long, long time. So he doesn't have to learn this lesson. He was probably told what to do. Did the Vikings learn from last year's extension to Thielen? Cause it was just a mistake for like for future players and examples. Yes, I'm saying I'm saying somebody said we got all we, I mean that contract, that extension was ridiculous. It was stupid. And I think we questioned it at the time and it was mm-hmm. dumber than I thought at the time. Yeah, and they're so, going to pay for it now. Yeah. What did they what did they learn from locking up a guy well past his prime out of a out of a weird loyalty that again in football just doesn't pay unfortunately. Yeah, are there I, I kind of feel like that wave of players is now like they're not going to they're not going to be extending any of those players anymore. Maybe Kirk, right? There's a chance Kirk did Harrison an Smith. You're right, because and Who, and the Smith extension also was not a great idea. But they don't really have any other veterans that are com- coming down the pipeline who are borderline, you know, late twenties. Their their roster yeah. is old right. guys and super young guys. You're right for the most part, right? Except for like Hawkinson, who's gonna, but he's 25, yeah. So he's gonna get a deal. That's they don't have any of those like too. 20. I guess Lin uh, Linball. Uh, Delvin Tomlinson, I guess, could fall into that category. That he's 28, 29. So he's kind of right on that line. Daniil Hunter. Yeah, but I feel that though, I feel like in, in the case of Thielen and Harrison Smith, it was more of a here's a lifetime achievement award. 
And you're right. Like Tomlinson's not going to be like that. But I just hope that they learn that with, you know, and, and as guys start to age now on their watch, who Kevin O'Connell might grow very close to, I just hope they have the ability to pull the Belichick, which is, thank you very much. I'm actually going to cut you a year too soon. Yeah. Yep. That's, I feel the Vikings had a good run there. They were kind of doing that for a while, oh, but uh, alas. They got very loyal. They got very loyal again. They They hadn't done that for, it feels like, quite a while. And they got loyal again to, okay, you know, we got to reward this guy. And it's like, out of his first contract, yeah, you do. Yeah. But by the time he's in his 30s, yeah, it's not a good move. Yeah. So, well, that's the that's the developing news here on Purple Daily. A little little bonus episode. The the main meaty beefy episode is going to be round two of us going through the entire Vikings offseason, move by move. Internal, external free agents. Football. We're going to sign players. We're going to do a five-round mock draft simulation from PFF. Football. <laughs> and uh, I think you'll I think you'll find it interesting. Let's just say there's a couple couple big splashes in there. So check that episode out on this Thursday. We didn't do a random Viking of the week today. I do have one. I have one prepared. If you guys want to do it now, or should we do, save it for? I well, Declan's like going to be out tomorrow. I feel like I'm not in a place to do it right now. What? I would do it but uh if, what uh, i feel like i'm just not i'm, I'm not in the right frame right now i'm so focused on free agency my mind is just but i'm so tied up with right. other things here's what's going to happen then i'm going to pit ross brendel against judd zilgad tomorrow and see nice. if a new can a new contestant can okay. can dethrone judd that's, that's awesome i mean you do what you have to do right now in the old noggin it's all free agency and prospects pro days coming up wow what a cop out Ridiculous. Very. How did the cop out? It's like fourth and eight check down here is what's happening. I am rolling around. Like cowardly. In, I am I am rolling around in pigskin slop right now. <laughs> Got a lot of balls in the air, as they say. Football. All right. Feedback Friday tomorrow, and then uh, we'll we'll hopefully hit you if Judd's ready mentally tomorrow I might not with be a ready random Viking again. of the week. And if you missed it, so on Mackie and Judd, our other daily podcast, Darren Doogie Wolfson, our our scoop machine, among other things, said that he has heard the Vikings have received at least one trade offer for Dalvin Cook. So check that out. He kind of buried that lead. It was like 15 or 20 minutes into the episode, but some good Vikings offseason speculation there and uh, inside information. All right, Judd, this is Judd's Christmas Day. Adam Thielen. Potentially about to be gone from the Vikings. Dis- the disrespect from Judd as he uh, just casts aside some of these Vikings legends. We'll see you guys later. Purple Daily.